Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we're dividing monomials. We're going to look at what monomials are, what exponents are, what fractions are, and then we're going to combine that all together. Let's talk about exponents first. A to the power of 5 means A times A times A times A times A, five times. It does not mean, and this is a common mistake, a lot of people think that A to the power of 5 means A times 5 which is not the case. A times 5, or 5A, is A plus A plus A plus A plus A. And that's not what we're looking at. With exponents, we are multiplying. And that's a very important part of everything that we're going to be doing today, is that, well, you'll see how it, that works together. But you have to understand that exponents are multiplying. A times A. So A to the power of 3 would be A times A times A. A to the power of 5 is A times itself 5 times. And a fraction like A over 5 divided by A over 3, or A to the power of 3, is the same thing. A times itself 5 times divided by A times itself 3 times. Now we need to talk about fractions briefly before we move on. And what I'm going to do, this may be a so I'm going to go over it pretty quickly. But fractions that look like this can be written out as A times B and 2 times A. That's a common thing that we'll do when we're trying to simplify fractions. So we'll, we'll kind of separate things out into all of their factors. A, B is the same as A times B. 2A is the same as 2 times A. Now what we can do to simplify fractions is that we can get rid of every factor that is exactly the same on the top as on the bottom. So A and A are exactly the same on the top and bottom. So we can eliminate them. We're not getting rid of them, magically making them disappear. We're saying A divided by A is 1. And then we're multiplying 1 times B for the top and 1 times 2 for the bottom, which leaves us with B over 2. So we've talked about exponents and we've talked about fractions. And next, we're going to try and put those two together. So exponents in fractions would look like this. A to the power of 3 over A to the power of 5. And that means we have 3 A's multiplied times each other on the top, 5 A's multiplied times themselves on the bottom. And we can cancel out anything that's exactly the same on the top as it is on the bottom. So we can cancel an A for an A, 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 A at the bottom there. And we're left with 1 over a times a, or in other words, 1 over a squared. That's what we're left with. Now, you might ask where this 1 comes from. We've canceled all these out, all these a's out. Why would we have a 1 on the top? And that's a great question. Again, we're doing a divided by a, which is 1. a divided by a is 1. a divided by a is 1. So we have 1 times 1 times 1 times a times a. On the bottom, you don't have to say 1 times a squared because 1 times a squared is just a squared. But on the top, we don't have anything. We have 1 times 1 times 1 blank. So we have to write in that 1 because it, it's not disappearing. It's not becoming nothing. It's just 1. 1 times 1 times 1 is what we have on the top. And you'll see that in several of the examples that I used today. I'm going to try and use that because that's a common area of challenge and concern that when we cancel everything out, what do we do? Well, if you cancel everything out, you do still have a 1, whether it's on the top or the bottom. Now, when we look at this question that I put up there, you might say, oh, I see a shortcut. I don't have to write A out 3 times and A out 5 times. I can just realize that there's 3 on the top and 5 on the bottom. And in the end, there's going to be 2 left on the bottom and none on the top, just 1 by itself with no A's left. And that process is to subtract the common exponents. In other words, 5 minus 3 and 3 minus 3. A to the power of 0 is equal to 1. A to the power of 2 is A to the power of 2. So we can do that on the top and bottom just by subtracting exponents. And that's a nice shortcut, especially when you're dealing with extremely high exponents. If you had a to the power of 300, you don't want to be writing it out 300 times, canceling all of them out, crossing them off. It's just not going to make any sense. 
So knowing that shortcut that you can subtract is going to be really helpful. Let's practice that with this question, b to the power of 2 divided by b to the power of 4. Were you quickly able to say, oh, I would end up with just 1 on the top and b to the power of 2 on the bottom. I'm subtracting b to the power of 2 from both of these. 2 minus 2 is 0, b to the power of 0 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 2, so I'm left with b to the power of 2. Hopefully that shortcut has helped to make this a little bit easier. If not, you can still write out the whole process, b times b, b times b times b times b, if it makes sense to you. But again, when the exponents get bigger, you're going to want to stop doing that. Here's another example. x divided by x to the power of 4. When we write x by itself, that's the same thing as saying x to the power of 1. So when we reduce it down, we would be subtracting 1x out of this, which leaves us with just 1. x to the power of 0 is 1. And we would be subtracting this exponent so it becomes x to the power of 3. We're just subtracting, and that makes our shortcut a little bit easier. Here's one that's a little bit more complicated, but you can still do it using the shortcut. I have x to the power of 1 times y to the power of 1 on the top, and I have x to the power of 6 on the bottom. Using the shortcut, you should be able to reduce that down to I have my y left over on the top, and I have 5x's multiplied times themselves on the bottom. I got rid of an x from the top and the bottom. And that's all I had in common was this x on the top. I had 6 of them on the bottom, now I'm left with 5. Now, our shortcut becomes a little bit more complicated when we add in numbers and different variables. And if it feels too complicated, you can spread them out and kind of break them up. You could break them up like what I'm doing here all the way out. Or you can make it just the numbers broken up, all the x's broken up, all the y's broken up, whichever is easier for you. Or if you're still comfortable with that, you can just cancel them out x to the power of 2. Oh, well, I'm getting rid of 2x's here. I'll get rid of 2x's there. Same way that we would with canceling them. I have 1x on the, or 1y on the bottom, 3y's on the top. Well, I'll get rid of 1y from the bottom, and one of those leaving me with 2 on the top. The number 4, I threw that in as well, our coefficient. 4 and 4 will cancel each other out as well, leaving us again with 1. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So now what we have on the top is 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times y times y, or in other words, y squared. And on the bottom we have 4x's left over, x to the power of 4, as we're multiplying. So again, you can use the shortcut, or you can use the expanded version. Either way, you'll get the correct answer, as long as you are careful to make sure that you're canceling out only the exactly the same, sorry, exactly the same variable on top and bottom. So here again, we've got, we can show it the same exact thing. If you use the subtraction method, it would be a lot cleaner. It's just this. Now, if you have a number instead of a variable, 4 to the power of 2 and 4 to the power of 6, if you want to, you can write this out, 4 times 4. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. You know, 6 times along the bottom, 2 times on the top and then cancel them out and see what you're left with, or you can just subtract like normal. 4 to the power of 2, well, we'll get rid of those, and that'll leave us with just 1 on the top. We'll get rid of 2 of these, leaving us with just 4 to the power of 4 on, in the denominator. And that's it. So you follow exactly the same rules with numbers as you do with variables. As long as the base is the same, you're in good shape. So try this one out. We have 2 to the power of 5 on the top, 2 to the power of 3 on the bottom. Try it out. See what you end up getting. Use the subtraction method if you'd like. Use, you write it out if you'd like. Either way, we'll be fine. So here's what we end up with if we write it all out. We had 5 2's on the top, 3 2's on the bottom. Canceled them all out. And we're left with 2 times 2, or in other words, 2 to the power of 2 on the top. We're left with 1 on the bottom, and that's important, because this is 1 times 1 times 1. We can't just get rid of it. 
So 2 to the power of 2 is 4, and 4 divided by 1 is 4. So this is our simplified final answer. 2 to the power of 5 divided by 2 to the power of 3 will leave us with 4 in the end. And one more thing about fractions. You, you're probably starting to think that there's a lot of more things about fractions. We can reduce fractions to lowest terms. One way that we do this is to write out the prime factorization. It can look like this with 2 to the power of 3 and 3 squared. Or it can look like this with 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 and 3 times 3 on the bottom. Or you can look for the greatest common factor and just simplify. You can cancel out any common factors. Whatever way you reduce a fraction to lowest terms is fine. If you look at this and go, it has a factor of 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 9 divided by 3 is 3. That's fine. But what you want to do is reduce fractions down to lowest terms as well. So if you have a coefficient of 24 and a coefficient of 9, you can reduce that down to being 8 over 3. And let's apply that to what we've learned. We have 15 over 9. See that? We can take our 15 over 9 and reduce it down. I'm going to take out a factor of 3 from each of those. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then I look at my x, my variables. I have four x's on top, one on the bottom. I can get rid of one from each. I have two y's on the bottom, three on the top. I can get rid of two from each. And I would end up with this final answer. If you're comfortable with the shortcut, this is really getting quick. And you'll notice that the dividing monomial gets really fast when you get comfortable with that shortcut. If you're not comfortable with the shortcut yet, you would just write it all out like this. 5 times 3 times x times x times x times x, four of them and three y's. I'm going to cancel out everything that is common, exactly the same top and bottom. I had one three, I had one x, and I had two y's. And then you would write down what you have left over, which is exactly what we said before. Again, subtraction method faster. This method might make you feel more comfortable, especially when you're first getting used to working with fractions and monomials. For your final question, I put this one together for you, 7a squared b cubed, and b to the power of 3, over 21ab to the power of 4. Go ahead and try and solve that one, and then I'll show you what I did to solve it. I decided this one I was going to write it all out, just to try and make, you know, make sure that we're reaching people who are still writing it out and people who are doing the shortcut. I wrote it all out, canceled out what was common between the top and bottom. I was able to get rid of a 7, a factor of 7, 1a, and 3b's, which left me with a by itself on the top and 3 times b, or in other words, 3b in the denominator. And that's it. That would be our final answer for that question. I hope that this lesson has been helpful for you and have a wonderful day.